The class diagram shows important domain objects and their relationships in the application. But we need other non-domain objects to help implement the find an artifact by ID API endpoint. In particular, an object will be responsible for handling incoming HTTP request, an object will be responsible for processing the domain logic, and an object will be responsible for accessing data from a database. I'm going to show you a typical design for a server-side application using the UML sequence diagram. Here we go. First, the client side calls this API endpoint, find an artifact by ID, indicating that they want to find an artifact by ID. The object on the server side that is responsible for handling this incoming request is called a controller. And in our case, artifact controller. Think of a controller as the entry point into a server-side application. The controller is responsible for retrieving the parameters, for example, the path parameter artifact ID in this case. It then delegates to a service object, that is, the artifact service object. The service object handles the core business logic, and it depends on a repository object, that is, the artifact repository. To access the artifact data in a database, in this case, the artifact repository finds the artifact from the database, returns it to the artifact service object, who returns it to the artifact controller object. At this moment, the artifact controller packages the results in a response and sends back to the client. So, Arrows with solid lines represent method invocations. In this example, when the incoming request comes in, Spring Boot will invoke the find artifact by ID method that belongs to the artifact controller and pass an ID to it. The controller then calls the find by ID method defined in the artifact service class, which then calls find by ID method defined in the artifact repository. Arrows with dotted lines represent returned values. At this point, I want to ask a question. Do you see a dependency graph? Which class depends on which? Yes, the artifact controller depends on the artifact service. The artifact service depends on artifact repository. So apparently, we need the Spring IOC container to inject an instance of the artifact repository into the artifact service and inject an instance of the artifact service into the artifact controller. Please bear that in mind. Next, let's implement this design by creating two classes artifact controller and artifact service, and one interface, artifact repository. So it turns out the artifact repository is an interface. All of them will be put under package artifact. In the artifact controller class, we're going to inject artifact service in and define a method called find artifact by ID, which takes an ID as argument. Then we're going to inject the artifact repository into the artifact service class and define one method called find by ID in the artifact service class, which takes an ID as argument. Finally, the artifact repository interface has a method called find by ID, similar to the artifact service class. It also takes an ID as argument. Let's do it.